In this video, we're going to be making this super awesome pulse setting glow effect inside of Unity using Shadow Graph. So yeah, let's get started. So for this one, I'm going to be using one of my favorite anime characters, Goku. You can of course replace this with your own character. So I've just gone ahead and dropped the sprite inside of my scene. And now it's time to actually make the outline for our character. And for that we are going to use the shadow graph. And in order to use the shadow graph, we're gonna be needing the universal render pipeline. Just go to Windows, Package Manager, and search for Universal RP. Here it is. And just go ahead and install this. And once you have installed this package, just go ahead and right click and create. Go to rendering, universal render pipeline, and just go for this first one. And it will create these both files. So this pipeline asset and the setting for the URP. I have renamed this to URP. So the first thing we need to do is go to the quality tab. And here we need to enable this HDR. We're going to be using HDR color in order to get the glow effect. And also we will need to use the post processing effect. If you don't know how to use the post processing effect, just check out this video up here. And we're going to need it for the glow. And lastly, we need to go to our camera and go to rendering. Make sure the post processing is enabled. Alright, we are now ready to create our glow shader. So let's right click, create, find shader. And because we are working with the 2D sprite, we're gonna use the 2D renderer. And I'm gonna be using the sprite under drop. You can of course use any of these. Let's just name this to whatever you want. I'll just call this glow shader. And now let's double click to open this up in a new tab. Here it is. Let's maximize this. Alright, let's set things up a bit. Here we go. Alright, so the first thing we need is a reference for our texture. So we're gonna be creating a 2D texture node. Texture 2D asset. And here we can choose a sample texture. Where I'm gonna be using this one. Alright, and now if we try to add this on to our texture node, it won't work. Because it expects it to be an RGBA color format. So we need to convert this using a sample texture node. So we can see our texture here. Tidy this up. And it gives out a RGBA color here. So we're simply going to connect this one to our color input here. And let's set this to quartz. Alright, here it is. And in order to dynamically change the texture, we need to make convert this into a property. So convert to property. And here we can see a bunch of settings. And if you want this to dynamically change to whatever sprite we have, let me go back. And if we select our sprite, you can see it holds a reference to our texture for this material to use. And in order for us to do the same thing, we just need to change the reference underscore main text. And that's all we need to do. And it will just automatically grab the sprite for us. So now that we have our texture, we need to create the outline for this. And we will use the step node, which returns a value between the highest and the lowest value. So let's just close this. So what we are going to do is we're going to use two of these step nodes, one for the highest value of the alpha and one for the lowest one. And we will then subtract them from each other to get the difference between the alphas to create the outline. Theoretically, it will work. So let's keep one to zero and the other one to like uh, one, which is the highest value. And you can see as it disappears. So we're gonna keep the value to like uh, under one, like 0 0.99 or 0 0.95 something. And now we can just subtract the highest uh, value for step node from the lowest value for step node. And it will return this nice outline for us. And we can also control the thickness of our outline using uh, one of these values. Either this one or this one. Yep, so both of these are working. And now we can just go ahead and actually apply this outline to our main texture. Let's tidy this up. And we're gonna use an add node to add the outline on top of our main texture. Let's bring the RGBA inside of this. And you can see it applies this nice outline to our main texture. Let's drag this here. And yep, uh, let's set this up. But we need some way to control the color of our outline. And in order to do that, set this up. We're gonna multiply the result of the subtract node. 
so using a multiply node and we'll multiply this to a color so let's get the inputs and connect this to a color node change the mode to HDR because we need the outline to create a glow effect all right let's set a color I'll just set it to something like this density to 2 and now we can just connect this node on top of our add node all right so it, uh, here appears our colored outline awesome and now you might be wondering how do I actually know how these nodes work well I don't have any idea it's just a matter of playing around with this and getting the desired results and this idea of using the multiple step nodes actually from binary lunar and I'll just put a link to his channel so you can check it out it has got some cool videos all right so yeah let's just save this asset and now we need to create a material in order to apply this data so let's go ahead and create a new material here it is let's call this like glow mat and now we need to change the shader to the one we created so shader graph and glow shader all right here we can see it and now let's add this on top of our sprite so we're gonna replace this material with our new one and right away it will create this nice outline onto our character let's zoom in on this of course the outline is a bit faded and we can fix this fix this uh, by increasing the alpha value of our color but for now we actually haven't converted into a property that we can change from here so let's go back and we're gonna convert this color into a property that we can tweak inside of our sector all right and also let's create a variable that controls the thickness call this one a thick yeah sounds about right and also let's set the mode to a slider so we can only go from zero to uh, whatever highest value we set uh, which in my case i'll just put into uh, 0.95 let's drag this in here and connect this to one of the step nodes all right and also let's change the default value to 0.95 all right let's save this and add back inside of unity and we can now tweak the color let's increase the alpha value and now our outline looks much better you can of course play around with the colors to anything you like i'll just leave it at orange for now all right and the only thing left here is to add some glow to our character and in order to do that we are going to use the bloom effect from the post process effect if i just go ahead and enable this you're gonna see some crazy glow so you can of course tweak around these values to get the desired effect play around with the intensity and the scatter i'll set it to something like this and now if we go ahead and maximize this it looks awesome doesn't it and now the only thing left here is to add some pulsating effect to this shader. And creating the pulse is quite simple. We all, all we need to do is play around with this value here. As you can see the lines which appear. Alright, so we can actually animate this using a time node. Let's go ahead and create a time node. And we're gonna use the sign time which goes from uh, minus 1 to 1. So we can just directly connect this. But it will give us this weird behavior because it will go all the way from minus 1 to 1. That's something that we don't want. So we're gonna uh, use a handy remap node that will remap the values for us. So let's connect this to a remap input. And we need it to go from 0 to like uh, 0 0.95, the highest value we have set. Instead of minus 1 and 1. So let's just go ahead and connect this to our step node and right away you will see it working just fine but i don't want the lines to completely dis disappear so i'll just set this to around around like uh, 0.75 or something if you don't want the lines to completely disappear it's totally up to you so let's save this you can already see the effects working but in order to see clearly we're gonna have to hit play here and here we go awesome isn't it so I hope this gives you a, uh, a like basic understanding of how uh, the shader graph work and a ton of cool stuff that you can do with it. Of course you can play around with these post processing effects to get the desired glow effect that you want for your character or anything you like. 
so just be creative all right so yeah so this one looks even better so that's all for this video i hope you liked it and if you did make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel it will be a great help and i'll see you soon in the next one